I never ask for nothing I don't demand of myself. Honesty, loyalty, friends and then wealth. Death before this honor and I'll tell you what else. I'll tighten my belt before I beg for help. Foolish pride is what held me together all the years that I wasn't felt, which is why I've never played myself. I just play the hand I'm dealt. I can't say that I never knelt before God at times and asked for better cause to no avail, but I never sat back feeling sorry for myself. If you don't give me heaven, I'll raise hell. I'm gonna share a story today that I've never told nobody. The people that were around during that time period that know what happened, they know the story, but outside of them, I've never told nobody. My wife just learned about it last night. The story is gonna explain why I have such deep-seated suspicions of white folks, particularly white men. It's not a fear. Some people are gonna hear the story and gonna say, oh, Brother Kush, you're traumatized, you need therapy. I don't need therapy. That was just a learning experience for me that, that showed me what I'm dealing with. Now I know. You know, that, that's, that's what that moment in my life was for me, a uh, aha moment. This story will justify everything I do. Let's roll on the Black Alpha. Let me tell you a story that happened to me when I was 14. 14 years old in St. Bernard Parish. I'm from the Lower Ninth Ward in New Orleans, next to us, the adjacent parish, to, I mean Orleans Parish. The adjacent parish was St. Bernard Parish and it's literally right across the border from the Lower Ninth Ward, right? So we would go down there to catch some parades down there, right? And on this night, me and Big Lope, this is the last time we went to a parade down there, we were 14 years old. Now, back then, St. Bernard Parish was all Klan members and white nationalists, them kind of people. You got black people living in that area now where all this stuff happened at. But back then, there were no black people living in St. Bernard Parish. It was all, all the worst kind of white folks you can, you can think of, right? And we down there at a parade, minding our business, and this big group of white men. Now, granted, both us 14, me and Big Loke were 14. Rest in peace, Big Loke. Big Loke dead. He got, he got killed in a shootout with the police, man. Um... I think 2005, 2004, right before Katrina, 2004, he got killed in the uh, shootout with the police, you know. But this was like early 80s, right? We got this big, huge group of white men, all grown adults, as y'all like to call them. And one of them walk up to Loke and just sneak him for no reason. Now, I had this little pipe I used to carry from the little weight thing we had at home, the little weight, the little cable thing, right? I come out my pants with that pipe and I start swinging. Coom, coom, coom. I'm swinging, bro. I got white bars all over me. Low got white bars all over him. We both fighting our ass off, man. We 14 years old. Everybody standing around watching. The police over there standing around watching. Everybody standing around watching. We are 14 and we're fighting for our lives for nothing. They beat my partner in the head with a goddamn claw hammer. Beat him inches away from his life. For nothing. <sighs> this is what happened when you when you let your guards down, you know what I'm saying? Because had we had them straps, I mean, yeah, okay. Let's let, let let's look at the story differently. Say we had the straps on us, soon the white boys would approach us, we just start banging. We probably would have ended up in prison. You know what I'm saying? At 14 years old, because they, they wasn't gonna let us get claim self-defense, you know? So he's probably gonna end up in prison, but at least Loke wouldn't have gotten beaten up like that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, I don't know which route would have been better. So when the white dude come on my page and say how we shouldn't be suspicious of, of, of folks based on skin color, you got some nerves, bro. You got some nerves, man. Stay in your lane. If you're a decent white man, stay in your lane, bro. Have some respect for the fact that we walk a different path in America. That our American experience is different from yours. Have some decency. If you're a decent white man, act like it. Show some decency. Don't come on here and tell me what I should I should let my guards down. I've done that. 
and one of my best friends that I had been knowing since we was we could barely walk was almost taken out for no reason viciously and violently beat him with a claw hammer bro that left permanent scars on his head for the rest of his damn life we got to stay vigilant and don't let these people disarm you because if they really was decent white folks they would not try to get you to let your guards down they would understand what we're up against they see the news and not just the news they got they got white friends they got white family members they know the conversations these people have with us about us they know how obsessed those people are particularly white men they know how obsessed white men are with black men they know it so for them to come on and pretend like we should let our guards down you got to see them almost as an enemy bro because somebody that really care for you would not care about you watching out for yourself they wouldn't care for you looking out for yourself because they would understand that that is the nature of every living creature so you gotta understand when i say i don't trust these people this is not coming from some pro-black idealistic place of hatred based on some kind of inferiority complex that has been instilled in me due to some kind of college education that's not what this is bro i have seen their face i've seen their true face i have seen the darkness in their eyes just based on them seeing a black man i've seen it i've seen it multiple times throughout my life i mean this is unprovoked people this is unprovoked we're not talking about me doing them nothing we're not talking about because i'm a pookie we're not talking about because i i got dreadlocks you kevin samuels type they ain't got nothing to do with none of that it's the fact that i exist they hate us with such a burning degree with a with a with a with a passion that is not comprehensible there is no way you can understand how much these people hate us bro do you think they do the stuff they do to us because they love us this has nothing to do with ideology i'm telling you these people hate us i've seen it i've seen it with my own eyes i've experienced it i almost lost a friend and this is why i'm telling y'all if i was walking into an alley and i seen a group of black men i wouldn't think nothing of it but if i was walking into that same alley i seen a group of white men i'm gonna get worried i'm gonna go back get my pistol and if i don't have a pistol i'm gonna go a different route because i know that if they outnumber me what particularly at my age right now what if they a bunch of young white boys is seven eight nine i am done they are going to jump on me bro it's what they do don't tell me that i should not be suspicious of them because of race don't tell me that i should let my guards down because that's racist nah this is called survival it's called vigilance it's called prudence you have to understand the nature of the animals that you are in the jungle with that is the only key to survival let's get real on a black elf